Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Sunday evening, August 25th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. Well, surveying the Atlantic, we had this disturbance in the northwestern Gulf, which is not developing, but again bringing rain to this area of the northwestern Gulf states. We have Invest 98L, which is a rather messy thing over here in the southwestern Atlantic. Here's a closer view of it. We sort of have this old front coming down in here, and we have some sort of elliptically shaped low-level flow trying to form a very loose circulation in here, maybe. Uh, not a lot of organization to this, but it is going to be taking off to the northeast East following this flow around the Bermuda High and uh, this will potentially organize a little bit better over the next couple of days kind of hard to say the European still tries this is the day two forecast on Tuesday morning showing a low here and then two days later it scoots up to the northeast on Thursday morning and is maybe close to a tropical cyclone of some sort. It's kind of more hybrid in nature probably on this run, moving up toward southeast Canada. And if something does form, it is possible that it gets up in here and impacts uh, Nova Scotia or Newfoundland. We'll have to see. The GFS is comparatively weaker with this system, and right now it's pretty messy. Lots of time to watch it, so I'm not going to talk too much about it today given how much there is to discuss regarding Dorian. Uh, but this will be something that will be around for the next four to five days on its way northeastward gradually. All right, so we also have Tropical Storm Dorian quickly approaching now the Lesser Antilles, uh, expected to arrive probably in the Windward Islands uh, sometime early Tuesday morning is the current expectation, and then will move its way into the Eastern Caribbean, and then there's some uncertainty as to exactly where it ends up after the first three days. But if we take a look at the close-up view here, we'll see that uh, there is some convective activity near the center. The center is a little bit hard to find. It's probably right here somewhere. If we look at the microwave pass, that just came in 20 minutes before I started this video. It doesn't look too much different from what we see on the visible satellite structure, and the, the center is probably somewhere in here, but it's a little bit hard to see. Uh, either way, uh, convective activity has been pulsing today. We had a couple of nice convective bursts that uh, have then died, and then we see replenishment of new little pop-ups. You can see some of these little convective towers here at the end of the loop popping up. Rather ragged in appearance in general when you don't see a large sustained uh, central dense overcast with a lot of updrafts continuously firing in the center. It means there's something wrong with the thermodynamic environment and in this case there's some dry air in the vicinity. If we look at the water vapor loop here uh, we'll see that if, we, if you ignore the feathery white cirrus here that's obscuring uh, the air mass below and if you look underneath that you'll see that the darker gray pattern is sort of outlined right in here and this is starting to encroach now on Dorian Center. There's also an area of darker grays on the southern side which is getting pulled in so the south and the west sides here are probably seeing some dry entrainment and it's possible that the pocket which Dorian occupies right in here has not fully moistened up. Just because we see white clouds here doesn't mean that there isn't dry air lingering within the storm circulation itself and again it's moving westward into this area of darker gray and will uh, you know, continually ingest some of that dry air. The fact that shear is low is helping the storm, and it is fighting here, uh, but it is has not intensified very much so far, or at least that's what we think. We're not going to get a recon plane in there until tomorrow to check for sure. But right now, the structure that we see on microwave imagery doesn't seem to suggest that there's any rapid intensification going on, largely because uh, these uh, convective towers are being consistently interrupted, and that intermittent interruption of the thunderstorms is preventing preventing Dorian from making significant progress. But it does look a little bit better organized today. Uh, the shear, again, is pretty low. If you look at the GFS vortex average sounding uh, for the analysis time here, you'll see easterly flow aloft, easterly flow in the low levels, pretty much aligned in the same magnitude. So very low deep layer shear of only seven knots here on the GFS. There is a little layer in here of southerly wind in the mid levels, and you can see that that layer is correspondingly a little bit dry in here. And so some of that darker gray on the south side might be getting pushed in just a little bit, but in general the shear is pretty low, will allow Dorian to fight the dry air a little bit on its way to the islands. Now again, the models aren't really excited about this compared to earlier. At least yesterday morning and the night before we had some models that tried to intensify this on its way into the Caribbean, especially the H-Wharf and uh, the European on some runs, uh, but now we have 
kind of a more unanimous look to the models where the storm is weaker. This is the European out today too, Tuesday morning, coming into the Windward Islands here, uh, south of St. Lucia, and it's not, I mean, it's barely here on the global model. It's about 1,010 millibars here. Now, the problem with using models that are lower resolution like this, uh, the global model specifically, is that they're not going to see this tiny storm very well. It's very likely that this is stronger than the European model thinks, that the GFS model thinks, um, but we won't know for sure because the models aren't going to resolve it very well. So the storm may very well be stronger than this when it gets here. That could be important because the stronger it is, the more resistant it will be to being destroyed by wind shear and dry air. But as it stands, the model has it pretty weak here. So if you go to the following day, Wednesday morning, it starts moving northwestward here, but it's weakening. And then by Thursday morning, it's moving into Hispaniola, which has a lot of tall mountains, which would uh, destroy what rest of the low-level circulation remains, although some could still survive to the other side. We would have to see at that point. But this is far enough because we've got a lot of uncertainty out to day four already. Uh, the reason this happens is because shear picks up largely. If we look at the GFS 200 millibar wind forecast on Tuesday morning, there's Dorian over the Windward Islands. And right now, at this particular time in the forecast, shear is not high yet. We have uh, some easterly flow aloft over the system here. You can see the big upper level trough showing up in the Caribbean now, but Dorian hasn't quite made it to the trough yet. It gets there by Wednesday morning, where the low has now disappeared, but the, the storm is here on the model and you can see the upper level trough now like this. And so Dorian is now getting some shear. And at this point, uh, combined with the dry air and the trade wind divergence where winds accelerate in the central Caribbean and make it hard for air to rise in the eastern Caribbean, those two factors destroy the storm in the model. But again, it's pretty weak. And the question is, how strong will Dorian actually be at the islands? Probably stronger than the global models think, but then again, even the HWARF, a very high resolution model that can resolve the small storm, no longer shows intensification either. So we're left with no dynamical models, at least those that are most reliable, that show much intensification of Dorian at all during this leg of its journey in here. And when the models say uh, something unanimous like that, it typically means that the thermodynamics, in this case the dry air, is just too much. Uh, for the storm. And so it's a very real possibility that Dorian sort of survives to the islands and then just meets its demise in the Eastern Caribbean, and that's probably the most likely scenario right now. However, we will have to watch for uh, whether or not Dorian ends up a little stronger than expected, because it is tiny. It is hard to forecast the intensity of small storms, especially when there's low shear, which means that it can eventually insulate itself uh, against some of the dry air it's surrounded by. That's something that's hard to predict and has consistently been that way uh, during the modern era. And so it's something we'll have to watch for. If the storm arrives at the islands a little bit stronger, then it has a chance to, to survive and be something if it misses Hispaniola, uh, because in addition to the, the larger threat to Hispaniola and Puerto Rico that a stronger storm would pose, uh, we also have this upper level trough to mention. And again, here on Wednesday morning on the GFS, Dorian would be here. We have a big upper low and then a second one over here. This one's backing away to the southwest. So if we go one day later, you can see this is moving westward. And and Dorian is now near the tip of the D Dominican Republic on this model. Now if Dorian manages to sneak in between these two upper lows right here, we talked about this yesterday, if it sneaks north of Hispaniola at all, while this upper low is backing away, the shear is actually not that bad. So if there's anything that survives to get to the other side here and moves up into the Bahamas or Southwest Atlantic, we might have to watch for either a reformation of the storm or a strengthening of a weak storm that gets into that area and begins intensifying. That's a long-term thing to watch for. Right now we just need to see what happens happens when it gets into the Caribbean, and then we'll figure out the rest. But it's something to keep an eye on. If the storm survives and then gets north of the Caribbean, it has a chance later to be something that we still have to watch. It's also possible that if the storm is weak, it ends up getting carried west south of Hispaniola and ends up maybe even in the Western Caribbean or over Cuba at some point. So there's a few possibilities here. It all really depends on how strong Dorian is right in here. We're going to have to watch for that carefully. That's currently expected to happen in only a couple of days. We've got Tuesday morning, the official forecast has this in the Windward Islands, where a tropical storm watch is up from uh, south of Martinique 
down to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and we've got a tropical storm warning for the Barbados as well. We still have the official forecast showing a hurricane here, uh, largely because that was their forecast yesterday, and the statistical guidance still says that the low shear should allow intensification. But we've looked at some of the other things like the dry air. It's very possible that this does not happen. So the official intensity forecast might get lower tonight. We'll see. Um, but this is, you know, this is on the table. It's possible that this could strengthen and become a hurricane in the Caribbean. So it's uh, something to continue watching if you live in the greater Antilles. And in the lesser Antilles, you're probably getting a tropical storm no matter what at this point. Gusty winds, heavy rain, everything that typically comes with a tropical storm. Luckily, this is no major hurricane coming. So that's good news. And again, if any of the remnants or the storm itself ends up north of the Caribbean, might have to, to watch to see if it sticks around later, but that's much longer term, five days and beyond at this point. All right, that's it for today. Remember, most of the graphics in this video you can look at yourself in real time at tropicaltidbits.com if you like doing your own analysis and tracking the storm in real time. But always visit the National Hurricane Center for the official forecast and latest information that's pertinent to you. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.